Hey GQ, I'm Kassam Brailsford. I'm a professional choreographer and dancer. Today we are gonna be watching some famous dance clips. This is The Breakdown. This scene is from The Greatest Showman. I'm actually in this scene and I'm wearing a long white wig. This scene took a long time to film. It was really cool, but we were restricted to this circular rink. I just remember filming this scene so many times because it was such an important part of the movie. We like did it for the cranes, we did it for the steady cams, we did it for all the side cams. We definitely danced this one a lot. I guess the bigger the cast, the more room for error, right? So it's like when we're rehearsing and all that, all that stuff to get it clean, it's just harder. The more people you add on and trying to look all alike, it just gets harder. That was definitely one of the challenges and always doing it the same so that when you're cutting back and forth, you're in the same spot, you're doing the same things. That's a challenge too, because you also don't have marks. And this was a musical, so we had to sing along the entire time. So you were singing, we're dancing, and trying not to fall on sawdust as well. Pause this. So this part right now where we're all slowing down, we all had to do this one by one on a green screen. So right now we're not all together, like they did this in post. So we all had to do our jump on a green screen so they could film it in slow motion so that they can slow it down for this. So that it looks like she's in one place and we're all going super slow. And after you do on green screen and they can slow it down, you put it all together and you get what you see right here. I wish I could jump that high for that long, but it's not reality. Still in the air. <laughs> <laughs> also, one other part that was really hard for this is this was made up to the words. A lot of times you learn choreography to lyrics and then because of that, when you're changing those lyrics, you're like something that your brain has to like unadjust to. I'm saying marching on, marching on. That's what I learned it to. But then I'm like singing, oh, 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 and it's not what I'm doing, so it's like you're brain is used to singing something that you're doing, but then you're singing something else and it's all very confusing. We drilled it so many times and recorded it so many times that it's like ingrained in my body. I can completely do this from head to toe. This is breaking. I've seen this a very long time ago, probably like when I first started dancing. This is break dancing. I cannot break dance and I've always wished I could because of movies like this. This guy has like so much control. He's just hitting everything in the music. He's hitting every single beat with a different part of his body. With break dancers, a lot of times, it's just a lot of just like freestyling. They're just dancing. They're letting the music take over. So it's not necessarily like training per se. It's just always practicing, always freestyling, just getting out there and honing in your own. There's no like right or wrong. It's just however you're feeling the music, however you want to hit the music. There's certain moves and there's certain tricks that people do all the same, but then there's there's a lot of stuff that you can do on your own. <laughs> Pause this. I do love this, but you can totally see the string. They didn't have as good of effects when this movie first came out. Pause. Before he was moonwalking, that was gliding, which is a, also a term for this move where you're like going heel toe and you're going sideways. It's very similar, but gliding is when it's sideways and then moonwalk is backwards. They're both very hard to make really smooth and he's doing a damn good job at both of them. This is probably one of the greatest examples of break dancing. I mean, no Michael Jackson, but still. Save the last dance. Pauses? Was she trying to get into Juilliard? You are not getting into Juilliard doing a ballet hip hop. This is just bad hip hop. Hawaiian, yeah. This is 100% a double, this part right here. It's from the back, the technique. Yeah, that's 100% a double at that moment. Look at her feet and look at her arms and look at her posture right now. This is her. When it's in the back, she's super pulled up. Her legs are straight, her feet are pointed. There, you see that position? Her feet are pointed, her arms are out, her neck is elongated. And when it goes to the front of her, it's not this at all. Now you see, now she has biscuits. Biscuits are when like, you don't really point your feet all the way through your toe. And I don't really have the best feet, so I, I, I feel for her, you know? <laughs> oh no. Rewind this. 
Uh, yeah, and after that too. It's the nose. It's like the typical like what you want hip hop to be. But she also she actually does an up rock, which is a break dancing move, which is starts right here. That's called an up rock. It's like where you go. It's like you cross and you go down. And she's just adding this into her ballet solo because that's what you do and say the last dance. It's still not great, but I mean, it's still her, which is cool. They're only using the double a couple times. You can tell when it's there and when it's her. And this is all still her. I just love the typical dance movie where they come out and they're a ballerina, they do hip hop, and then she's gonna convince these judges and now they're into it and they're nodding their heads. and. You know what I mean? It's just like the typical, the typical story. Now, sexy dancing. Okay, here we go. All these legs are double, you can tell. If you're really trying to portray like good technique, especially like with ballet, I think if the actress or actor can't do it, then you should use a double so that you're not showing the world wrong technique. So I think a double is very necessary. Sometimes doubles aren't just because they're bad at dancing, it's because something happened. You don't know the shooting schedule or how many times they did it. They work really hard and a lot of times they're in there standing in for them. Like the double will do a first for lighting and like they'll double be there in rehearsals with us and then the double will go teach them. So they're doing double duty a lot of times. But what would you give that C? I'd give it a, a C, because it wasn't, it, I mean it was bad, but there was effort. I know, I know, I know. You got served. They're killing it. Like, they're really killing it. They're so together. I just remember watching this when it first came out, and it was a lot of dancers I looked up to when I was younger. And it just showed dancing in such a cool way. Dance battles are very real. They're not just a movie thing, they're very real. If you go out to a club and like songs come on, it's just like natural dancers. We wanna move and you get in a circle, you start dancing. Not necessarily always a battle, but a dance circle, you know? I've never personally been in a battle. Also, this isn't realistic. I don't wanna compare it to like white chicks in other movies. They're not gonna go out and then with five friends and all know the same thing and be there right there. When it's a competition, yes, that makes sense. There are crews and then they, all, they do compete with each other and they do all know the same routine. But like, you're never just gonna go out and bust into this. Yeah, be like, hey, you, yeah, let's break into like d routine number five. It's just not realistic. Pause. This is more realistic. Say you're out and about and dancers are there and music comes on, one person's doing something, everyone's cheering him on. Like his friends are cheering him on, the other people are cheering him on. This happens. You don't really break into like a group routine. It's more like solo stuff. Okay, rewind this. So now look at this move done right and not on Julia Stiles. So this is the same move that she just did in the last movie. Play. There we go. You see that? It literally was the same move, but it looks good now. This is a good example of like good hip hop and contrasting between this and Save the Last Dance. They're just more in the pocket. In the pocket's a dance term where it's like, you stay where you're really right in the beat. It's like you're not early, you're not late, but you're just in the pocket. But they just have a groove about it. And it's not super stiff. I think that's another thing. With her, it's super stiff. With them, they're just like, you feel it, you feel the music. Like they're actually telling a story. They're actually they're with the music and they're not too sharp and robotic. I think also with Julia Stiles, she's an actress and she's learning to dance for a movie. She's doing her what she was taught, you know, but that's not her first thing. I'm sure if all these dancers go and act, we're gonna be like, oh, these are dancers that are trying to act. Silver Linings Playbook. <laughs> Pause. I love this just because they're like having fun, right? And I think that's why people relate to it because it's like at a wedding, everyone's gonna get up and dance. That's kind of like this. And also doing whatever the music tells you and how the music moves you is very different. And it doesn't always have to be ballet or hip hop or technically correct. You can just literally do whatever you're feeling and it's still dancing. Sometimes they don't need to train a lot if you don't need to be technically correct. So it's like, it can vary. And then they're really busy too if they're shooting this movie. So you only have so much time. You're lucky if you get multiple days with them. I am curious to see how they got out of this lift because they cut. So <laughs> I'm wondering like how graceful or ungraceful was this dismount after, <laughs> right before she comes out. Cause she's up there and then they cut and all of it, her hands are on the ground. 
ground. This isn't an easy thing to get out of. So it's like, if you're not a dancer, she has to like put her hands on the ground and then kick her feet over so that she doesn't like come straight down on her head. And back to ballroom. Again, I mean, it's not technically great, but they're in it. Here we go. What are they gearing up for? The big lift. Oh, get it, get it. <laughs> Elbows. Also, it's like so inspired by Dirty Dancing, that part. Let's rewind and figure out what exactly went wrong with that lift. He didn't get his arms extended. When you, when you don't lock your arms, it's so much harder. So you wanna use the momentum of them coming to you and lift it up straight as they get there. So everything goes, this is so much harder to hold weight on than straight arms. And right now his arms are bent, so he can't get her as high as he wants. And then so she's trying to help by pushing off his shoulders. And then you can see his arms bent there, his arms bent. She's trying to push, her legs are bent. They're just trying to figure it out and her crotch is in his face. He definitely should have straightened his arms. With that lift from Dirty Dancing, as soon as she gets to him, he straightens his arms. His arms are locked, she's super tight, and it's just such a cool picture. So it's like everyone that is not a dancer and wants to be lifted thinks it's super easy. I'm sure my first lift was horrible, but I never dropped anyone. Knock on wood. I much rather prefer to do the lifting. Like when I'm on tour with Pink and we're always partnering, I just feel much safer with us knowing that I'm lifting and that I can take charge and make it happen as opposed to trusting someone else to make it happen. And they trust me too, and that's a lot of pressure, but I like it. Yeah, this next one's Chicago. Who doesn't know Chicago? Let's play this one. This is so good. Like you would think she was a dancer. Her intensity in this and her focus, like she's doing this like a real dancer. Like you wouldn't know that this is an actress dancing to me. I think she fits in so well with the dancers and she looks like she is part of this tango and part of this scene, which is why I think this goes over so well because she just looks like a natural. This is like actually a tango. How impressive is that? Even her, She's in the middle with all of them and her splits. I feel like with musicals also, it's you add that extra element. You're not just dancing, you have to sing the entire time. And a lot of times you sing out loud because when you lip sing, it looks like it on, on camera. So it's a lot of times you're singing out loud. You have to enunciate, especially in musicals and a movie, you want to get the words across and you want to get all the musical right. And they all sing in different parts. And they're in heels and they're on the ground, and they're not wearing knee pads. A lot of times too, as dancers and as guys, when you're covered, you get to wear knee pads, which is a good secret to like protect yourself. But when, you, when you're in lingerie like this and like not wearing much, you can't put a knee pad on, you know? Unless you're doing an 80s movie and it works. I have had some bad costume experiences. I mean, shoes are a big thing because all the surfaces that you dance on are different. A lot of times it's when they want you in a dress shoe and they want you to dance. It's like you're dancing on ice. One of the tricks is you'll get like Coca-Cola and you'll have it on the side on a towel and you kind of try to make your shoes as sticky as possible. If that doesn't work, you use hairspray. If that doesn't help, you can get like a rubber on the bottom of it. So there's a lot of tricks to make your shoes danceable for you. A lot of times they have to make a lot of adjustments. Step up two, the streets. Dancing in that rain, also already applaud them for this without even finishing the rest of the clip. Like that's not easy. Water changes everything. I mean, trying not to slip and having this in your eye and it's coming down on you the whole time. Rain is not fun. It looks cool, it always looks really cool, but it's never fun after the second or third take. If like the crew's nice to you and the director's nice and they have thought to warm the water first because a lot of times I've done something where the water's not warm. So like you'll be doing this and you have to pretend like it's fine, but you're like freezing. It's very dangerous and very hard because they're really close to each other too. And now they're break dancing and their legs are going everywhere. They're turning over. I mean, I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten like kicked or hit in the head or the face or the body anywhere just cause it's like, you can't really see what you're doing with stuff like this. And a lot of times you're blind, like you have a blind spot and just comes with the territory. And they're on the ground with the water in their face, I'm sure they can't see anything. They're just relying on like their spatial awareness and their muscle memory to like do what they know how to do. We can bring it back, bring it back, 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 back. We can bring it back. Pause that, rewind this. That was cool. One, two, three, four. Four knee spins. So this is not, a knee spin's not easy to do in general, even doing one. He just did four. 
Like I'm sure he's wearing knee pads under those jeans because that would just kill your knees. You're literally turning on your kneecap. That's, it's called a knee spin and like that's what you're doing. You're turning on your knees. Yeah, that was dope. He is killing it. He is killing it. He's giving you like old school Michael vibes, right? Like with the footwork and the hat, yeah. I feel like that, that's another thing about these dance movies that also are not realistic. It's like they always have the crowd in a perfect square watching and no one comes in. I mean, when have you gone out and seen like everyone in a perfect square watching something? Anything at that matter, like not even dancing. Despite the water and everything else they're working against, they are killing it. I give this scene an A because they are so together, they're doing really hard moves and they look good doing it. This next one's Climax. I haven't seen this one yet. That kid's amazing. I have no idea what he's doing and there's no, I don't even know what style this is, but it's amazing. It looks like a mixture of like what bone breakers do. Bone breaking is like, they do all that stuff with their shoulders and their arms and they keep their hands connected, which he's doing a little bit of. I'm sure this was choreographed. I'm sure if not choreographed, it was a thought out freestyle where he probably wanted to do the same thing every time, for movies at least. A lot of times with movies, they have a special move in mind. They want you to do the same thing. So a lot of times it's choreographed and you'll have a little bit of freedom. There's so much going on in this scene. I like the combination of the different styles of everything in this. It's like. She was kind of crumping and then she kind of was doing contemporary. And it's just like a little bit of everything. With this scene being one take, it's really hard because it's like you can get to three quarters of it, right? Someone messes up, you have to start from the beginning or else you can't use that take. And then also the aspect is where the steady camera, the cameraman is also becoming a dancer for this because he has to be aware of where all the dancers are, where everyone's moving, the dancers have to be aware of the camera, and it's just all married in a way where it can be seamless and part of the choreography. It's it's really nice when you get a good steady cam operator because they know it and they like come in the room and they're like a dancer and they'll watch it and they'll be like, okay, I saw that person there, I know I need to do this, I'll go that way. And in this scene, you have to know, regardless if the camera's coming to you, you sometimes you have to break out of choreography, let them pass, and then get back into it so it doesn't look like you ever move from your spot, which is a really hard thing to do for some people. I honestly didn't know what to expect when this clip started, and I'm really into this. I think a lot of times, dance and movies, it's like the storyline that kills it, right? It's like, it's just always so cheesy. When it's like a movie and it's like a save the last dance or something, you're like, okay, this isn't realistic. The dancing's not that great. Like, why are you doing that? Let's make this person take a class and then she falls in love with this hip hop dancer and then now they're gonna be together and now she knows how to do everything. And it's real tired. I love seeing dance of all forms in all movies and it doesn't have to be necessarily like technically correct. It's like we saw Silver Linings Playbook where they're just having fun and it's like, you wanna see that. It makes it relatable. You see these movies and it like makes you wanna get up and dance with them. I mean, who doesn't love to dance? And music brings everyone together and it's great seeing it on film.